imagine a very complex software application with hundreds if not thousands of functions and variables. Perhaps an application developed by dozens of developers working in synergy. How would you go about mastering this complexity? In the 70s, as computing power and complexity of software were increasing exponentially, computer scientists endeavored to answer this question. The idea they came up with was to develop high level of abstractions to describe the code they were dealing with. Instead of simply having variable and functions, they started to describe code in a more idealized, almost platonic, way. In remote times, astronomers started grouping stars together in constellations to facilitate their identification. Likewise, computer scientists started to cluster together variables and functions into classes to ease code development. A constellation is an idealized form that binds together a group of stars in the night sky. Likewise, a class is an idealization that binds together a set of functions and variables. For instance, a class counter may bring together a variable value, a function increment, and a function get value. Variable value stores the current count. Function increment increases by one unit the value of the counter. Function get value returns the current count. This simple idea, effectively a rhetorical machine, makes it possible to hide complex behavior in classes and make code readable and reusable. A class defines a new type of object, allowing new instances of that type to be made. It is essential to grasp the difference between the class, which defines a common structure, and the instances of such class, which represent specific objects belonging to the class. Let's now create a package counter package, a module counter module, and an empty counter class in it. Instances can have attributes for maintaining state. These attributes are called instance attributes. Instances can also have methods for operating on its attributes. Finally, there may be attributes that belong to the class, and not to individual instances. These are called class attributes. Let's now extend the class counter with methods and attributes. Attribute max count is a class attribute. Class attributes are used to store information that belong to the whole class, and not to any individual instance. Method init is automatically invoked for the newly created class instances. It is generally used to initialize instance attributes. Keyword self refers to the class instance and must be passed as first argument of instance methods. In our case, self.value is used to refer to the instance attribute value. Class attributes can be referred to by prefixing to them the name of the class, as shown for max count in the if statement. Software engineers use graphical languages to model complex projects involving many classes. UML is one of such languages. Let's now create a new instance of class counter and bind it to local variable C. Method init is automatically invoked when a new instance of the class is created. Therefore the value of the counter is now zero. A key thing to bear in mind is that in Python assignments do not copy data. They just bind names to objects. This may look a bit esoteric at a first glance. Let's have a closer look.
it is extremely important to stress once more the difference between class and instance attribute. Let's see another example of this. In addition to traditional methods, in Python there are two other types of methods, class and static method. Class methods can be used to access or modify class attributes. Keyword CLS refers to the class and must be passed as first argument of class methods. Static methods are typically used to capture standalone functions that do not need access to class or instance attributes. For instance a mathematical function like the square root may be coded as a static method. Finally, a key aspect of object-oriented programming is class inheritance. Inheritance refers to the ability of creating subclasses that inherits all attributes and methods of the superclasses. Let's see an example. But why do you need to know about object orientation at all? It turns out that most modules you will end up using in Python are object oriented. In fact, even lists are objects. The fact that you access elements using square brackets instead of the hidden function underpinning this operator is simply syntactic sugar, as computer scientists call it. <laughs> 